What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. As y'all know, it's right there. It's free, and that enables us to keep coming to you guys as often as possible with as many interviews as possible, with as many icons of the game as possible. Now, today, we have a special treat. We are being joined by the incomparable, magnificent Leela James. Thank you for coming through. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes. I'm in the grass. <laughs> I see that. We got to get you out the weeds. <laughs> uh, I like it. <laughs> well, it's good to be where you like to be. And um, you've got so much great music over the years. And you got the new unsung episode that everybody needs to check out on TV One. And uh, in the episode, and also I know from following you, uh, your career, for the majority of it, if not all of it now, um, one thing that you talk about and one thing I think is important that's not only for how your music's been labeled, but also in your life is the porch. So um, that that was like where you would write, where you first were singing and how people, you know, label it or back porch music or back porch soul. So why has the porch been such a consistent thing throughout your life and throughout your career? Well, I think it just sums up uh, my sound, which is a very down home Southern sound. Um, um, my vocal delivery over the, the music that I've done over the years can't be denied I, from the standpoint that you hear the, 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 the Southern twang, you hear the, that influence um, of, of sitting on your porch, just singing whether you're the front porch or the back porch, that's a cultural thing. And just, um, I think it just translated in my, um, my music over the years and it's pretty consistent because it's who I am. As a, as a soul Southern singer. Right. From South Los Angeles, I guess. <laughs> I'm from, I'm, yes, I was born and raised in South Central LA, but my family is from the South Texas. So I was the only one that was born in LA. Gotcha. So a lot of those influences come through your, your music a lot. And uh, when you had the Let's Do It Again, you had Betty Wright, uh, the lead of that, that album with the Cleanup Woman. Mm-hmm. I also thought it was funny because uh, you kind of refer or talk like how she kind of did on her little interludes at times. So is that where mm -hmm. that comes from for your music or is that, where does that come from? It's definitely, I mean, I'm influenced by those, those artists. Um, again, that's what I heard growing up. That, that, that's my root. So it comes natural for me to do certain things because that's what I, you know, heard. And that is what, is considered the norm for me. Um, and I'm definitely influenced by, you know, the great soul singers like Betty Wright and, and, and so many others, Gladys Knight and Aretha Franklin and the Tina Turner, Shaka Khan, all of those great singers, Shirley Brown, Betty Wright. Yes. <laughs> on, the, on your Tell Me You Love Me, that little talking thing you do at times made me think of the Betty Wright and knowing that you would cover her uh, made me think of that. Um, yes, they did a lot of that during that time, that era. They did a lot of that kind of speaking over their music, introducing, just kind of talking about the song. And yeah, I, I feel like that's the thing to do. <laughs> right. Now, uh, with uh, the Changes Gonna Come album that you had, of course, we got Sam Cooke reference on there. But since you have such a Southern soul feel and aesthetic to a lot of your music, that album in particular, you got Wyclef, you got Pete Rock. There's a lot of uh, rap, quote unquote, rap producers on there that have done some soul and some R&B. But as your careers progressed and evolved after working with them, what do you see that you learned or saw differently from, uh, say, you know, other people that you work with that are more strictly R&B arena? I mean, well, the I wouldn't know that there was major differences other than, I mean, obviously hip hop producers is going to give you more of a hip hop, you know, edge to the music. Um, and then R&B is typically more straight ahead R&B. But I think the beauty is in merging the two, you know, um, because they're all pretty much the same, you know, in terms of that place of soul. We all come from that same place. So when it's when it's merged, it's, it's all it works. It can work. <laughs> right. Well, hip hop artists love R and B. R and B artists love hip hop. Yeah, I I do 
think it is interesting or ironic though, in the sense that, especially after that album, you haven't been aligned with the with rap nearly as much as some of the other soul singers. They get so intertwined with it that they aren't able to differentiate itself. Whereas you have really, I think, established yourself as a singer that doesn't need, require, or lean on uh, rap per se to be successful because you're so good at what you're doing. So what is, what do you think that, why do you think you didn't fall into that thing? Well, I don't, I don't even know that it was intentional. I just think that as an artist, you just continue to evolve and grow and do, just do you. And that's all I've been doing with myself, my career. Um, And my approach to music, even back then was always, I never wanted to be put in a box because I love all kinds of music. So, you know, that's hip hop. I love hip hop. Ratchet hip hop is that. <laughs> um, I love clearly and obviously soul music. I have a gospel background. I love blues. I love rock and roll. I even love some country. So my thing is, I just make music and I happen to be an artist that is soulful. Um, and, and so that being said, it doesn't really matter for me, the, the, the musical production sometimes, as long as it's good, but I feel like the delivery is always and the soul is always going to be me, the voicing, because I'm the voice of the soul. And so if I'm singing over hip hop record, or if I'm singing over a straight R&B or rock and roll record, you still don't get that soul because I love all kinds of music and I never wanted to be boxed. Oh, I'm just this kind of artist and I only make this kind of music. No, I make music. I make music for everybody. I just make music and I just sing. Well, that's one of the great things about the Let's Do It Again, the cover album, because you got Betty Wright, you got Rolling Stones, you got James Brown. It's, it's very diverse. Um, so with say the Rolling Stones, for instance, cause you did Miss You, what, what was it about that song or about the Rolling Stones that appeals to you, would you say? Well, I mean, one, I love, again, rock and roll. Two, I, I had toured overseas in Europe, and I used to perform that song live because it was always funky um, to me, and it always had an element of soul to it, but it, it hadn't been um, performed by a soul singer, so per se, um, in that way. So I said I was just going to sing it and, and sing it the way that if it were sung by a, a, a full-fledged, what is considered soul singer would sound like, this is what it would come off as. And so that's what it is. But it's a, it was a great, it's always been a great song. I'm a fan of the Rolling Stones and I just love making, again, music um, of all kinds and just, you know, putting my thing on it. Okay. Yeah. Because... Uh... Throughout your career, too, I, I always noticed, or at least for me, picked up on some things I thought were different connections. And one of the ones that I really thought was intriguing was the the married interlude off your first album, but then fall for you, because it seemed like uh, uh, married interlude was almost, even though it came out first, was a sequel of sorts to fall for you. So <laughs> what um, with the desire and the, the feeling of having that love and having that later, what you articulated so well would fall for you, where, where and why does that seem to be a recurring theme in your life or in your music? I mean, because everybody wants to be loved, point blank, I think. And that's a subject that will never get too old um, or won't go out of style because love, love makes the world go round, you know? Um, and I feel like singing about it, you know, in various ways never gets out of style because my child wants to be loved. You want to be loved. Everybody wants love, you know. And so, you know, you can write a love song and it, it, it will continue to resonate with people because it's the real. It's, the, it's a real emotion. Like who doesn't want to feel love or be loved? I haven't met anyone yet. <laughs> right now with fall for you as you discuss in the unsung and something i thought was interesting given some of the problems you had early in your career creatively with people trying to change your direction or make you do different things that this 
at least the sonics and the piano element of it was producer Rex Rideout's idea, at least initially. So at that point in your career, artistically in the 2000, late in the, you know, after we get more than 10 years after you were trying to come out, what made you at that point feel comfortable to take this idea when so many people have been trying to change you and do these things to make you different from what you were? Well, you, you said it, Rex Rideout. Um, he was instrumental in um, supporting me in all aspects of, of who I am as an artist. He was truly, truly believed in me, still believes in me and accepted me as an artist and was able to bring what I, I felt like I had suppressed in some ways out. And so for the first time, I felt free to truly be who I am as an artist and really let my soul glow, if you will. And um, it was just a, a really great moment to actually finally connect with a producer that got me wholeheartedly. And what, as you guys developed your guys' relationship creatively, what was he picking up or noticing that other people hadn't that you had collaborated with before? Just the raw truth. And he just let me do me. And he was able to um, bring out, again, what was in me always, but perfect it without making me feel like there was something um, wrong, if you will. Like, it was like, no, everything is right. Let's just perfect it. Okay. And... I also think it's interesting because um, a lot of your songs or some of your songs have an element of rap where you're talking more about like your career and stuff like, or how music makes you feel in a different way. Uh, like how you did on music in particular, which is kind of, I would say uh, unusual. And also on, I ain't new to this. You kind of talk about your career and, and your life, but from a professional standpoint, um, so why is that something on songs to do rather than dealing with the strictly emotional things? I mean, because there's no script or I don't think you, you, there's no rules to what it is you want to write and sing about. And so for me, I, I write and sing about what's real and true to me. And, 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 and sometimes even, um, indirectly what's still real and true to me. Um, so if I'm feeling like I need to get something off my chest, that is emotional. You know, if I'm saying, hey, I ain't new to this, like, show me some respect. You know, just like Aretha Franklin had R-E-S-B-E-C-T, find out what it means to me. We artists have been doing this since the beginning of time. You know, listen to me, you know, respect me, whatever the case may be. I ain't new to this. Like, so I'm no different. And I just wanted to, I think at that time, whatever it was I was feeling, I needed to get that off my chest and say what I said in my song. And that's what I do. And I, and at the same time, I can, I can turn around and, and write a love song too. Cause that's a real emotion as well. But you know, emotions are, can be a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I tend to sing about it all. I don't put no cap on and say, I'm only going to sing love songs. I'm just this. No, I'm a whole lot of stuff. You know, I, I, I'm, I also am, am very passionate about, you know, um, social issues so you know you you get that too clearly, clearly. <laughs> and also in your own song episode you talked about really confiding in your mom when you were struggling and when you were living in New York and how you were contemplating giving up so throughout your professional career and your life I wanted you to explain how valuable your mom has been as that sounding board what what made you at that point, after not talking to her, not confiding in her, make you really say, I got to tell my mom what's really happening? Well, my mother is my pillar of strength. She brought me in this world, number one. So, you know, if anybody knows me, it's going to be my mother. And you just, it, I feel like you get to a point, you're, I even tell my kids this now, I understand it more so now because I'm a mother myself, but I feel like you're, you, even as old as you are, you always need to that that motherly love of of, of 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 nurturing and so I just needed that at the time from her you know um I just 
felt like it was time for me to let her know what was going on in my life and also just just get some direction and get some wisdom because my mother is a very wise woman and she's been there from day one of my life and again so if anyone was to know what was best for me at that time I felt like it was her and and she was right most of the time she is always right as you say <laughs> mother knows best so um I, I go to my mother still I'm grateful to be able to do that too okay and how how do you think her insight has guided you professionally, would you say? Well, my mother um, taught me to remain humble and grounded. And I, you know, and I think that has kept me in a place where I haven't allowed the industry to destroy my soul um, when things weren't bad, I mean, weren't good. Um, I remain humble and grounded and grateful in, in, in other things. And so I think that comes with, again, being rooted in the way that I was raised to, you know, count it all joy, no matter what, and, and count my blessings and not what the things, you know, see things from a positive standpoint. It's hard sometimes to do that, but, you know, kind of see things from a positive angle versus, you know, the woe is me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And so I, I think that that's guided me because this is a, this is a rough business, you know. I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a rough, hard industry, and and, and it can destroy you emotionally um, if you're not on solid ground and if you're not strong. And so I'm grateful to for my mother for to raising me of being you know strong and being able to kind of weather the storms of you know the the emotional roller coasters that can come with this this ride of this industry. Yeah. And I think, too, uh, speaking to her when you were in New York, but then also the success you had early on in Europe, touring over there, and then with Stax, at least originally not being even in L.A., it's just uh, so interesting that some of the success that you've had has come from other places other than home, and ironically is the entertainment capital of the world, or at least the United States. So... What was it about leaving LA and experiencing success and failure elsewhere that enabled you to, you know, keep rising despite some of these setbacks? I mean, you just, you don't stop, you know, you fall, but you get up, you know, or it, you stumble because sometimes you don't fall. You might just stumble or you just slow down, whatever, but you just, you don't stop. You just keep moving. You keep pushing, you keep going. And so that's, I think it's, it's just pretty much that simple for me. You know, um, I think the other thing I've always just happened to love music. You understand? Like, I really just love making music. I love singing. And I was I was never driven by the material things that come with the industry. So I was never driven by the financials, even though it's great. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I was never driven by that. Um, I was driven by initially you know, again, just the fact that I just love to sing, I love to perform. And, you know, to some extent, that could be a fault because you don't always, um, especially in my younger years, I wasn't on top of my business, the business aspect of things. So that's probably why certain things went the way they did as well. But overall, because I happen to just love music, that's what allows me to continue to, to do it and to keep going because I don't always see the business side of things. I see just I love music. I'm just going to keep singing. And I love making other people feel good. I love performing for folks. I love to see how my emotions affect their emotions. How if, you know, if I could help one person get through a night that wasn't feeling like they wanted to live any anymore, then that's what I, I've done my job. You know, if my show did that, you came out to my show and you left my show feeling better than what you did when you, before you got there, then I've done my job and that's success. Yeah, that's that's success. Clearly. And I think your career thriving as it is today is a testament to that. So speaking of which, what uh, stuff do you have working on now that you want to share with people? Well, obviously, I have a new single out right now, Complicated. And I want everybody to download, stream that so we can go up the charts with that. Um, I'm working on and finishing up the new album to the supporting it. OK. Well, there it is. And then what what have you also found with the um, R&B divas in Los Angeles that that 
enabled you to show a different side of you, like you mentioned, philanthropic stuff, some of these things that maybe people didn't see, actually see or know about you as much. How has that affected the trajectory of your career? Well, I think um, doing R&B Divas gave, you know, um, uh, lent itself to a larger platform for people who didn't know you know, just the, the regular side of me, the human side, you know, that I'm like girl next door, around the way girl next door. So it did that and it got, allowed people to see that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely down to earth and, um, you know, not just this, you know, singer that is out of touch with reality. I have real feelings. I go through real things like everybody else. So it did that and then it was able to expand my, my audience. Leela James, thanks for coming through. Anything else you wanted to add before we wrap it up? Yes, just again, thank you all for continuing to support me. Um, be on the lookout for the new album, download, stream, all of that. And continue, just, I just appreciate the love, man. Thank you for your time. There it is. All right, well, congratulations on everything. And uh, appreciate your time and uh, thanks for coming through. Thank you.